A Hat in Time was one of the biggest games during the resurgence of platformers in the mid 2010s, with it being fundraised on Kickstarter. A Hat in Time would reach its goal quite easily and go through five years of development, with it beginning in 2012 and the game eventually releasing in 2017. The way it was worth it, this can be seen with the overwhelmingly positive review score this game has on Steam. But what about those who disagree? Who didn't like this game so much that they went out of their way to write a negative review about it? Just what is it about this game that they don't like? or even hate. That's why I decided to look at all 870 negative A Hat in Time reviews and gather all the best ones, so you don't have to. As usual with the Steam reviews, you will encounter certain kinds of meme reviews, the one word reviews that don't leave much to talk about, and the buy this masterpiece of a game type of reviews. These apply to pretty much any game, but I want to take a look at the reviews that can't be said for other games. There is a person that gave a negative review because they could not beat the Toilet of Doom boss fight. Well, here's some tips if you have troubles with the boss. Instead of using the swing shot to hit him when he is in the middle, you can just use the brewing hat and throw a potion at it. This review is nearly a year old. I really hope they figure it out before then though. Or what about this person, who gave the game a 0 out of 10 because of its reference to Sonic the Hedgehog? This person gave a hat in time a negative review because they didn't want to sell their soul to the snatcher. Even sitting that, if I didn't know better, I would think they wanted to be offensive. Now. Maybe I'm just missing something culturally, and if that's the case then please let me know in the comments, but to me this just looks like a shitpost. And since we're talking about quote unquote offensive reviews, this one has to be my favorite out of this bunch. Just want to put a word of warning here, that the game is not family friendly. It had me walk into some questionable scenes and language before, but when I arrived in the room with a dead body lying in a pool of blood and a knife sticking out of it, I hard quit the game and never opened it again with my kids. It's like the devs have no idea what kind of style or audience to go for. Seems like Peggy has consistently missed these scenes in their rating assessments, calling the violence non-realistic and non-harmful. But I do not want to deal with the gore and the concept of murder with my 7 year old. For those that don't know, this is what they're referring to. Just look at this. Like I said, one of my favorite meme reviews. But if there is a slight chance that this is real, and this is not somebody just trolling or LARPing, then I feel really really bad for their child, since they're probably living a very sheltered life. The level design is just awful. It always feels like I'm wrestling with the camera and just trying to navigate the hub worlds. Camera angles are very bad. Half of the time I can't even see where I jump. Hat Kid sticks to the wall and performs wall jumps all the time. I just want to walk near the wall. Some platforming requires you to jump to a very tight platform near a wall or something. When the wall climbing happens, you most likely see a camera close up without being able to tell what's going on. This happens all the time. And not only with wall jumps. He can't move the camera freely. There is a button that changes the camera view, but it doesn't work well and rarely helps. Most of the time it is useless. This game is heavily inspired by the late 90s and early 2000s platformers like Banjo-Kazooie and Psychonauts. And it carries that inspiration heavily, even with the camera issues. But that's only if you take the default camera controls into consideration. If you go to your settings menu, you can see that there are different options for camera controls. And if you don't like the default ones, then just experiment around and see which one you are most comfortable with. Some of the platforms can be very narrow and difficult to land on. I had troubles with the field of view when I first started playing the game, often over or under shooting platforms. It doesn't help when you have narrow tight ropes and just small platforms in general. Thankfully, the game is quite forgiving with its frequent checkpoints and it doesn't have a life counting system like they do in older games, such as Super Mario 64 and Psychonauts. You have multiple hats, and the hats have powers. To use a different power, you have to switch hats, and they all share the cooldown of the one you just used. If you use an ability with a long cooldown, the cooldown remains, even after switching to a different hat. This review makes a good point. The hats and their long cooldowns can slow down the gameplay quite a bit. The first example that comes to mind is this hallway here, before you entered in Yakuza Metro. But if the cooldown wasn't in the game at all, then this game would be much, much easier. Just imagine if you could spam the Dweller Mask when doing platforming, or you could throw potions without a cooldown if you keep switching between the two. And also, for the constant switching, there are only so many buttons on a controller, so I'm not quite sure how they would implement the system in a different way. General abilities should not be swappable, but available after unlock. You have limited badge space, only one at the beginning, and three if you get them all. So basically you have the illusion of choice, because some badges need to be active at all times. Now this is a point that I agree with. When I played this game for the first time, I would never experiment with the badge system, because I always had the hook shot and the pawn collecting badges equipped at all times, and getting rid of those two badges made the gameplay feel a lot more limiting. Most of the hats are useless, most of them work on very specific parts of the game, and it seems that they are a uncreative way to block your progression in some parts. Well. I mean, that's how the hats were designed. You get new hats, which let you explore areas you couldn't go to before. That's kind of the point. 
you know, other games do this as well. Like I mentioned previously, Super Mario 64. You have the Metal Mario cap and the Wing cap, which let you explore parts of the level you couldn't before. I don't really get this point too well. And also, the game is designed in a way that you will use all of these hats many different times if you're going for 100% completion. But if you don't like a certain type of hat, then you can just ignore those timepieces which require it, and you will still have enough timepieces to get to the final boss stage. If you're just playing this game for its nice visuals, music and gameplay, I'm sure you might enjoy it. But if you're playing it for the story like I did, I suggest looking somewhere else. The story was never the main point of this game. The story is set up this way just to give the player an excuse to start exploring the stages and for the game to have a conclusive beginning and end. Nobody plays Super Mario 64 for its story. Well, I don't really want to read these reviews that are on screen right now. I'll just say that these are the kinds of people that would call me a snowflake if I called them out on some of their beliefs and worldviews. If you only have Mac OS, stay away. The devs have given absolutely no support and made no attempt to fix these issues or warn users. The DLCs don't work on Mac and I cannot refund. Yeah, the Mac OS port of this game has been kind of neglected, but at the same time, MacBooks just simply aren't designed for playing video games. If you look at any game on Steam, there's a good chance that Mac OS won't even be listed as a platform, and if it is, then it most certainly won't run as well as the Windows versions. As these reviews are quite old, and I don't have a MacBook, I can't confirm if the achievements or DLCs work on macOS as of today. If anyone watching this video has access to a MacBook and can fact check these reviews, please let me know in the comments. Thanks. The devs went ghost on console versions while the PC was getting DLC. Then they released DLC on the Switch, leaving the PS4 and Xbox with no updates. As of writing, they finally released the DLC, but the damage was already done. Don't think I'd support the devs again. This person wasn't happy that the DLC did not come out on consoles at the same time as a PC release. I don't really think that this point warrants a negative review. Yeah, it sucks that DLC came out later on other platforms, but it still came out on all platforms eventually, right? Like, I understand that you're annoyed. Trust me, I've been there with Sonic Mania, but I think this person might be a bit too dramatic about it. Oh, they waited for like two years. I understand it more now. There was a Kickstarter incentive to release the game on Wii U, which was reached but never released, or even began development. While the reception for this was mixed at best, it makes sense as the Wii U didn't sell very well to begin with, and the Switch was coming out at the time. After reading all these reviews, I was hoping to see some new perspective into the game, and maybe shine a new light on parts of the game that I really enjoyed but others haven't. But most of these negative reviews of this game were about the poor optimization of the PC version, along with the neglection of other platforms, or that this game just isn't for them. The complaints regarding the default camera controls and the near constant switching of the hats were the only complaints I've seen from people that at least had a good time with the game. And those are the same problems I had experienced when I first played the game as well. To me, it's clear why this game has overwhelmingly positive reviews. Well, that's all for this video. If you enjoyed, then please make sure to leave a like and subscribe as it helps out a lot. On the left, you will see my most recent video, whatever that may be. And on the right is the last video I uploaded, a retrospective on Sonic Riders. Thanks for watching and cheers.